I'm Dr. Harris, and I'd like to talk to you about the exciting uh, uh, world of bioelectricity. And bioelectricity is everywhere. Okay, plants use it. Plants have been discovered to have things like nervous systems. They're actually able to sell, send slow uh, impulses down their phloem that cause changes at distant parts of their organs, such as in their roots. So if I'm an insect and I come and uh, nibble along here, uh, the plant is able to sell, uh, send a signal to its roots to get some insect fighting hormones and friends on the job. Bacteria! Bacteria into electricity! We are ju only just starting to use um, uh, uh, um, bioelectricity in microbial fuel cells, but it's been discovered that bacteria also have channels. They talk to each other, like our nerves. Why would a bacteria need a nerve-like protein? Well, when you get a whole bunch of them together, they talk to each other about what the nasty immune systems are doing to you. Uh, uh, their, uh, na your nasty immune system is doing to them, and they communicate, as well as energy. Who knows? Maybe a yogurt, your yogurt is talking about you. Shame I don't speak Greek. Okay, finally one that we had to look at, our fish. Fish are in water. Water is conductive. What a great way of communicating. A number of fish, not just the electric eels which shock things for living, but also just a lot of ordinary fish just talk to each other quietly, click, click, click during mating. Some of them even sense the fields that are made by creatures in the mud that they eat. So bioelectricity is exciting, and there are a couple of ideas that I want to share with you a little later for projects, how we might be able to tap into it. And here you can see the uh, uh, device used to measure those, electro those um, electrical signals in the pond. Uh, basically a piece of uh, PVC pipe uh, with some electronic circuitry attached to it. Uh, the front, very close to the end, is what's called a very high input impedance op-amp. takes very, very low current signals and converts them one-to-one -one in other words, with a gain of one, to a, a more strongly currented signal, which can be sent up a wire to the main amplifier, uh, which amplifies by a thousand times, sorry, by ten thousand times, um, the, uh, the signal down at the bottom. And then that can be fed into a headphone jack initially to listen to, but I wasn't hearing much, so I put it onto an oscilloscope so that we could see it. And the whole thing is just battery powered. So there you go. You are witnessing here a, uh, a reading on an oscilloscope from two electrodes placed into a pond. You probably can barely see that. That's the pond over there. It is dark. And what I am doing is I am picking up small amounts of electrical activity that are going on in there. The time division is 20 milliseconds. Um, so each of those bars is 20 milliseconds of them. If you had 50 of them, you would have an entire second. So we are looking at this sort of situation where I think there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 of them. Uh, you're looking at a, a reasonable fraction of a second. Now there is some cyclic, spiky sort of activity on the side of the pot there. 
You just heard the dog come out to join me. Something spiky. Let's see if it changes if I give the pond a big tap. No? Nothing too, too dramatic. How about if I give the electrodes a shake? Yeah, a little bit. Has it gone quieter? A little bit quieter. So this pond is not circulated, uh, has anything circulated by air uh, to it. This is just a uh, electrode noise that's going on in the bottom of it. Let's take the electrodes out of the pond, see if we get somewhere there. You notice that you've got a nice relatively flat line there. So the point is that there is some kind of electrical activity going in my pond. This is a pond which is not connected to anything like near the mains and which is not showing anything like a sine wave. My thought is because the electrical activity is episodic, perhaps it corresponds to the nervous system or uh, something else of some living creatures that happen to exist in the uh, mud of it. It's very interesting, don't you think?